or the first one is the introduction to planning. And next topic will be power system planning process. And then we will directly move towards the from electric power system planning to transmission planning. And then in the transmission planning, we will discuss the different planning criteria and standard as per different utility practice like NERC and AEMO and the national electricity rules and the electric reliability council of Texas and different international standards we will discuss. And the next is the what type of system studies are required to perform the transmission planning exercise. Basically on we will discuss next in the end the power system simulator for engineering the software interface and in the end we will do a hands on simulation exercise on PSSE in this lecture. So these are the preambles of our today's lecture. I hope you all will. See the. And understand all these concepts. So starting from the introduction to planning, so before going to start our transmission planning. So what is meant by planning? So from the definition of planning, basically planning is is a statement of choice that made by decision makers at any one point in a time to meet the specific goals and objective. So planning is is a basic related to the decision makers. So in the planning goals, so all planning exercise have one their goal. So that inform the capital investment decision making associated with the expanding the electric system. So but these exercises based on the local, regional and national level. So these goals may be depending upon the decision makers and the policy development. So basically for a policy development, decision makers do a planning. So this is the basically map. So th there are different planning criteria uh, categories related to the policy developments. So the the first category is the time frame. If a policy maker is creating a is doing a planning to make a decision. The first one is a time frame. So time frame mean the attributes related to time frame mean the planning must may be the short term planning, mid term planning and long term planning depending upon the goals, depending upon the objective of the government and objective of the stakeholder and regulator and the other market. So next category is the subsystem. So it, the subsystem means the attributes related to subsystem the distribution planning may be done on, on the distribution level and maybe on the generation level and maybe on the transmission level. And the one of the basic example is in, in our today's uh, era is that. The, in every every in every country, the renewable trend is increasing. So in order to tackle the climate changes, so now at this time at this stage, the policy maker is basically developing the policy related to generation like we are replacing generation of fossil fuel generation with the renewable generation. So this type of uh, policies related to this these subsystem. So so in the policy development, the planning may be related to subsystem also. And the next category is a collaboration level. Sometime the planning activity is conducted only by a single entity like a transmission company like a regulator and sometime with the collaboration of any joint ventures or any donor agencies. So also the planning categories varies so based on the collaboration level also. And the next is the geographic scale. So planning is activity is conducted based on the local level, based on the regional level as well as the national level. Definitely the short term plannings are all the based on the local as well as regional, but on the national goals and the governments make up policies and add these planning categories in the planning. So basically this is the introduction of planning. So planning is a very broad topic that is related to the policy makers and and that is related to the decision makers that develop a policy based on the time frame based on the subsystem and based on the collaboration level and the geographic scale. So this is a chart of our basically the planning categories and the policy developments. The first table is with respect to subsystem and then 
varying with the time frame like the load if we are just dealing the planning related to load is up to load development plan that is zero to four year is is under the short term planning four to ten year in the mid term planning and more than ten year is a long term planning and similarly if we are performing a generation planning exercise if it is within the four years goal four years objective we mean we are expecting the generation and we are planning the generation for the next four years so it means it lies in the short term planning and next if it in the transmission expansion plan in order to meet the demand in order to supply that generation carry that generation from the generator to the load center through a transmission expansion and through a transmission network so that also related to the time frame sometime government is interested some some stakeholder regulator is interested in the short term planning on interim arrangements and sometime 4 to 10 years and some to more than 10 years and similarly the distribution planning the specifically the, the expansion of the distribution networks mostly done on the mid term and up to the short term planning so these are the different time frame for the different sub system in from the planning perspective and similarly from the collaboration level so if, if it is a single company definitely on local level only the single company is involved but in the regional level joint studies are involved and if we are inter if we are discussing the interconnection of some other companies as well as the consumer and the customer then the multi company involves but at national level so all stakeholder starting from the regulator market operator system operator then the transmission operator and then the distributor operator then the regional control so operators so all operator all stakeholder are, are involved in the national activity so these are the basically inputs and these are the basic introduction related to the planning I mean when the planning activity is performed so all these factors need to be considered in the planning so from the planning we are directly moving toward the electric power system planning basically in the planning the, there is a concept of energy system planning so as a whole there are different type of like the in under the energy system planning there is a transport net and transportation planning there is a gas and oil planning and all other planning also involved that's the electrical vehicles but the power system planning is a subsystem of energy system planning when we say energy system is also a power system that's wrong only we need to clear that power system is a subsystem of energy system but it because it is a critical parameter base is a critical component of the energy system planning therefore we mostly confuse with the energy system planning and the power system planning otherwise the power system planning is a separate entity separate thing and the, this is a subsystem of energy system planning so in the power system planning the first step and the first and the most important step is a load forecast I mean if we are developing a plan of a power, a power system network for for next 10 years or for next 20 years the first input the first input is a load forecast that basically that covers the load demand of your di distribution networks as well as the system demand and different diversity factor load factors so all these information is required based on the load forecast so how this load forecast so load forecast is a, is a separate a single a separate planning task like in the load forecast there are different power market survey method and the econometric method and the regression analysis method based on that that database they develop a, based on the customer demand they develop a demand of different distribution companies and then they pr basically predict a demand for the next 10 years basing based on the growth factor so this load forecast is the most important factor so in in a power system planning department the first department is the load forecast department so right after the load forecast department based based on the load forecast in, as an input then generation plan is carried out so in generation plan basically generation plan for the is tells us that for the next five years for the next 10 10 years basic depending upon the goals and objective it tells us how much capacity and how much and where and why and which type of generation is required in our country like I'm interesting in increasing the renewable energy mix in 2020 by uh, 2025 by 5% or 10%. So that is basically depend upon the demand of our network. So 
based on the load curve, based on the load duration curves and different para parameters, the generation plan is developed. So next step is a generation plan. So gener in generation plan is an another department. So gen in, in generation planning department, they develop a long term generation plan and mid term generation plan depending upon the objective. And the third step is a transmission expansion plan. So our course is basically related to our transmission exp expansion planning exercise. So basically mean how much transmission network is required in the next 10 to 15 years to, in order to meet the demand and in order to carry out that generation towards the load center. So this is the transmission plan. So in this exercise, there, this is a very rigorous exercise and we will do in, in this in this course and we will solve hands on simulation and sensitivity analysis on the PSAC software also. So in the end, in the power system planning process is a transmission investment plan. I mean the the transmission plan that is that we have selected that we have proposed in order to meet the demand and in order to basically supply carry out that generation from the generator towards the demand is a transmission in all the transmission networks and then we will pre prepare a cost basically the financial analysis of our transmission network so that is an, uh, another department so it means under the power system planning umbrella so there are four departments the first one is the load forecast department next is the generation plan department and third is the transmission expansion plan and the fourth one is the transmission investment plan so we will deal only in with the transmission planning so it means that the load forecast the lo all load demand and the generation plan is already we know I mean we know the demand of our next years we know the generation of next years only what we do we will predict and we will analyze and we will propose and we will see how much transmission infrastructure is required to supply that demand in a reliable and a sta stable way oh, so i think this power system planning process is clear to all of you so directly moving towards the transmission planning so in the transmission expansion planning problem is a very complex problem and it is a multi-variable problem so when we do an optimization problem, definitely there are a lot of constraints like environmental constraints, right away constraints and the financial constraints and the environment like other constraints also. So the first most important constraint is the interplay between the resource needs and the transmission needs. I mean how much capacity is need required to meet the demand and then how much transmission is required to meet that to carry that generation. And next most important factor is the reliability. Basically the performance of the system in case of outages of generation or out and any outage of transmission. So in under the reliability, we will calculate the safety index, system average interruption frequency index, and the system average interruption duration index, safety and SADI for the transmission reliability indices. We will do in, 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 a, in after the couple of lectures. So next to the multiple decision taking decision. Yes, a lot of decisions are required over extended period because we know that the transmission component is very uh, for a transmission tower and from transmission conductor, a huge amount of investment is required. So a lot of decisions are required to finish that task on within the period. Because the, all these are the challenges, all these are the planning challenges re related to the transmission expansion plan. And next one is uncertainty since the time is in future. So uncertainty related to time because we there sometimes there is a government issues, sometimes there is a right of issues and sometimes there is a, a transportation and shipping issues in the co component. So a lot of these are uh, all of these the constraints related to the transmission expansion planning. So as a whole, if, if we make a one objective function like cost is our objective function in order to minimize that cost all these uh, reliability and the uncertainty and the adaptability and all these things are we will consider as a constraint in the optimization problem so this is a transmission planning so directly diving into the transmission planning so i think in the transmission planning the first important uh, thing is the horizon I mean we need to clear about mean either we we are performing the transmission planning for short term or either we performing the transmission planning for the long term. 
so if we are performing the short term transmission plan then what type of decision are required and what type of, what time how much time of span of study is required and what are the analysis what are the parameter that we will see during this studies and what type of studies are required under this umbrella so if we are performing a, a short term transmission planning so decision required is the cost of basically overall plan options so the, the option that we proposed what is the cost of that those are options and next is the reliability design criteria i mean what are the if we have designed some component and we, we have designed some transmission network so what are the criteria that we have followed and reinforcement decision and the basically basically these are the outcomes of our this short term planning so this we will conclude that what are what are the criteria need to be basically considered under this planning next a time span of study this is dependent on the lead time or financing project because in short term that is only 4 to 8 years ahead but in the long term the the time period is very the time span is large so analysis is required we we, we see the transformation how much transformation capacity is added mean how much demand is added how much new transformer and new lines are added in the year so in the service year and transformer and conductor capacity of the existing conductor as well as the in the proposed conductor for the next 5 years and similarly the all data related to capacitor shunt compensation insulation materials and the power quality parameter also like the voltage unbalance flickers and the harmonic content also so the most important things that related to our psc software is the different system studies required under the short term planning because when we do a short term planning then there are a lot of uh, planning a lot of studies are required to conclude our uh, parameters because we are doing only short term planning so the first one is a load flow analysis and next the optimal power flow that is related to the reactive power compensation basically like mean the capacitor placement optimization so opf tells us where and where the under voltage occurs and where the over voltage occurs so where we can place optimally capacitors and next transient stability dynamic stability and the short circuit analysis we will discuss all in details the I mean why we do transient stability and why we do short circuit analysis and the harmonic analysis and the economic and financial and the composite reliability analysis so we will cover all these uh, exercises in, under under uh, under this course so this is a very I mean extensive uh, and the hard course so you need to work hard during this course also so be ready for the course so next is the transmission planning decision related to long term so in the planning activity if we are doing performing the long term transmission plan so it means when where and how much more new transmission capacity is needed definitely for, for 8 to 20 years ahead we are planning I mean where transmission infrastructure is required Yes, these these plans may be change may be change in future, but this gives you a complete picture that how your network will uh, mean grow in such a way that the demand should be met in a reliable fashion. So analysis required same analysis mean parameters the power transfer capacity the trans all the thermal mean the line series compensation because in the long term planning we the parameters are. Uh, we see uh, from the larger perspective rather than being into details and similarly the study required only the load flow analysis basically it tells us the where the power flows is, is moving from within the network and next transient stability either the network is stable with this new network or not and short circuit basically tells that with, with the future addition of generation the level of your short circuit is within limit or not level of your breaker or within limit or not and then the economic and financial analysis so economic analysis basically in economic analysis we do different uh, basically the feasibility of project we see like we see the rate of return we see the payback period we see the cost to benefit ratio of our, our project and also we see the internal rate of return so that is economic parameter and similarly the financial analysis in in under the financial analysis we see the all the cost aspect of our of new infrastructure that we will uh, propose during this long term transmission planning so this is in all these are the inputs and all these are the important concept related to transmission planning decision making 
so the first thing is that we need to clear that if we I mean if we are looking our uh, we are developing our policy from the longer long term perspective or, lo or the short term perspective. So in, in that after that we will see different uh, I mean parameters and different studies. Then we can create a TOR term of reference of our studies. Then we can perform the studies directly on a software. OK, so in the transmission planning process, the, the initially there was a uh, introduction and there was a brief introduction regarding the transmission planning. I mean how transmission planning came from the power system planning. So now we are moving towards the transmission planning process. So transmission planning process. So what type of steps are required to perform the. Transmission planning. The first step in the transmission planning process is the review of transmission planning criteria. Definitely, if, if you are clear that you are clear, uh, you are performing a transmission planning for, for a short term or for long term perspective for a, for a long term horizon, then you need to develop a criteria. The planning assumption criteria I mean like the steady state performance criteria and the transient performance criteria. What are those criteria that we need to we validate those in under uh, in the in the study. So we will see a, a little bit. And next is the decide the horizon year and intermediate years. Basically, these are the spot years be, because if we are is performing a study for a, a long uh, long term doing a long term planning for next uh, up to 2040. So 2020 is a base year, then 2025 and plus five is a intermediate years and then 20. 35 is a next year's and the 2040 is a horizon year. So in this way we develop a spot year so that our planning that we propose that we propose our networks is under the basically there will be a no over cost estimation so that therefore we do split our problem into different spot years. And next is next step is after the horizon is selected then we need to assess the bulk interface flows. I mean if you are performing a power system planning exercise, transmission planning exercise in a, in Australia or in a, like we, we need to come have a complete picture of your uh, country network. I mean the where interface flows, where is the generation available and where the load center is available. So the geographical analysis of the power system network is necessary for a power system engineer. So in order to see the conceptual analysis, because uh, one more important thing in I, I want to quote here that. The software only va validate your answer. As a power system engineer, you should give a solution first. You should perform a conceptual analysis because based on the power flows, I know that the in the future there is a lot of generation is added from left from north to south. So definitely there will be a, a transmission addition here. Uh, but uh, uh, either this transmission addition is a reliable option, is a stable option that I choose that depend upon the simulation. So as a system engineer, you need to become a solution provider. So as a solution provider, you need to perform a conceptual analysis first, then perform that analysis, that model, that network in the in the software. Then software only what is validate your question, validate your choice. Uh, nothing else. So, so this is the important uh, I mean thing that I want to discuss. And next is the incorporate ge in generation expansion plan and the system load forecast in the study flow model. We have as basically we have defined our uh, planning criteria. We have defined our horizon year. We have seen the conceptual flows, and then now we are modeling as per the generation expansion plan available for each year and the load forecast for each year in the study model we are preparing. Then prepare a preliminary transmission expansion plan. I mean what we do, we basically make a conceptual analysis. Yes, I know here in, 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 in this area in the mid center, the demand is increasing. So definitely a lot of transmission infrastructure is required in future. So OK, but I don't know what, at which voltage level and how much conductor is required and which type of conductor is required. That is under the transmission planning exercise. But at, at, at the first, we should have a comp idea that a preliminary transmission expansion plan. What is this? 
and then test against the set criteria. So what you have model in the software, then test these can is uh, mean all these model case in the software then PSSE against that those criteria steady state as well as the transient. After that, then pre prepare a preliminary station layouts and the unit cost estimates and then recommend a bulk transmission expansion plan and then estimate the cost recommended for the BOQ and then provide cost input to overall power system. That is a transmission system expansion plan and transmission system investment plan. So this all these are the steps uh, are required to perform the transmission planning. So this is the whole transmission planning process. OK. So the first input in the transmission planning is a transmission planning criteria. I mean, yes, we are clear that uh, the policy maker is develop, uh, developing a transmission plan for the next five years or next 10 to 20 years. So what are the criteria? Basically technical criteria. The first criteria under the steady state performance is the voltage. So voltage of each grid and substation under normal condition like N minus zero mean all components are in connection. So the threshold is that the 5% of the nominal voltage. So mean the 1.05 mean from 0 0.95 to 1.05. This is a range where voltage are in acceptable range. So under N minus one condition, the voltage range is higher. That is 10% from basically in per unit. That is 0 0.9 to 1.1 per unit. So this these are the criteria for voltage. And next criteria is related to transmission line loading. So under N minus one condition, 80% of its rating. So line is loaded only 80%. So when the line is loaded more than 80, 80%, so it means as we need to augment that conductor, we need to string that conductor or we need to change that conductor. Either we need to propose another solution. So next is the under N minus one condition. We can accept on the thermal limit that is 100% of its rate. So next is the transformer loading under N minus one condition. The its rating is under 80% and N minus one is 100%. So note that the basically I want to Discuss here that single contingency mean the loss of any one element. OK, it may be a line. It may be a transformer. It may be any generating unit. And it may be a sudden loss of load also. So this is a type of a single contingency is we mostly in, in every grid code. This is N minus one and sometime now there in a modern grid code. There is N minus one minus one. I mean due to one component. Another component is also out go out of this uh, system. So that is N minus one minus one. So now they are also following and mostly and the next is the N minus two under dipole contingency for HVDC and the if a tower contingency if tower collapse, then the whole, both conductor are out out from the system. So these type of criteria that we uh, we need to validate during the transmission planning exercise. So next is the transient stability performance criteria. That was the first one, the steady state performance criteria, and now the transient stability performance criteria. So under the in the transient stability performance, the first one is the transient disturbance. So we apply a three phase to ground fault on the transmission line for five cycle under normal clearing and n minus one pre fault condition. Like we are not tripping any line, just we apply a three phase to ground fault, mean three phase balance fault for a five cycle. Five cycle mean if your is frequency is 50 hertz, it mean it is 100 millisecond. And similarly for one phase to ground fault and transmission line for nine cycle like stuck breaker case. If there may be a stuck breaker in if the first breaker is not operating the second secondary protection, that's the nine cycle. So nine cycle mean 180 millisecond. Same with the N minus one. And we can but here in the worst case scenario, we, the first is we will see that we will apply a different type of disturbances under transient and we will see the response of the system and then we uh, basically propose that OK, this line is feasible to add in this system because that system is not under strain. So we will see and next is the frequency. So frequency range is very important factor. So the frequency range means that under N minus zero is a 2% and then 
basic uh, next not 49.8 to 50.2 hertz and under n minus 1 condition it is 49.4 to 50.5 hertz so this range is we will see note that no loss of load for a single generator contingency mean uh, when we do any contingency under the transmission so the load must be supplied it means that the loss of load probability lolp it should be zero okay so we will see that these reliability these are the generation reliability indices the loss of load probability and the loss of load expectations under the different disturbances right so these basically these are the criteria that we will see on, uh, in the transmission planning whenever we perform a transmission planning exercise we need to uh, have a complete idea of these criteria i mean either we performing a we are validating our case under the steady state performance criteria planning criteria or transient performance criteria okay so it means that the horizon is basically the step is clear short term planning planning criteria is clear and next step is the horizon and intermediate years yes we we have already discussed this next is the identify and assess the power transfer interfaces and then preliminary transmission expansion plan and then preliminary selections then build and simulation then transmission expansion plan so after transmission planning criteria next is the horizon and the intermediate years because our horizon year based on the planning period for example it is 2040 so we are making a transmission plan up to 2040 then we need to split our case into intermediate years I mean like and to end of ninth and five year plan like 2023 and then 20 like from this is from the 2018 but we can now we can select from 2020 or 2021 that that is a, a gap of five years each in such a way why we split this case basically if we are making a spot year up to 2023 so what we do in 2023 up to 2023 we will model load forecast we will model generation plan and we will model all the required transmission and the load demand and the capacitors also and we will see I mean uh, if this how much transmission transmission infrastructure is required to meet that demand and to basically carry out the analysis so uh, similarly then we will move further to up to 2028 but in planning process mostly what a planner do they make a 2040 basically the first year they create a case for 2040 then they come back from 2040 to 2030 simply by switching off the lines and switching off the component so mostly in the transmission planning exercise uh, i mean if the network is, is complex to in order to uh, save time they create a 2040 uh, mean spot years first and then come back from towards the base year so this is a basically hit and trial it depend upon the network and data available so we will see in the exercise okay after the basically after the planning criteria and after the horizon we selected then we need to see the power transfer interfaces like this is a pakistan uh, mean map from north to south, uh, south basic uh, from south to north and under the balochistan and sindh area uh, we have a thermal generation and on, in our basically in uh, northern area we have a hydro generation and our load center is mid between south and north so in the in, in punjab like in lahore so the generation from from the uh, from the so southern part and as well as the generation from the uh, northern part coming towards the load center towards the mid mid country so there is a, uh, a lot of right of way constraints because the northern part is a hilly area and mountainous area and southern part is a congested area so a lot of new technology is required to basically evacuate that generation from the generation generating station towards the load center so in such a way we we perform a conceptual analysis basically from the geographical point of view of the power sector we see that where power flows are coming from where the in power is coming towards the load center is there any right of ways available or we sh should move towards the flexible ac transmission lines like fact devices or in such a way this so this all these information that are related uh, for a planner this is a power transfer interfaces I mean at the interface like at northern interface at different interface 
we calculate the powers and then we sum up mean the power from southern part is this much megawatt and power from the northern part this me much megawatts so all these uh, parameters all this x all these exercises are related to power transfer this wh why we are doing these this exercise basically this helps us to uh, get an idea that where we can add the transmission capacity where we can add the transmission network so this is the transmission transfer interface basically this is also called the conceptual analysis okay next is the trans transmission planning approach okay i have selected that i have this much demand in this area i have selected the, i have seen that this much demand in this area i have also calcul calculated that the transmission infrastructure is required in this area so next important thing is that selection of technology either the transmission should be ac or dc and at which voltage level and how much number and how many number of circuits are required for that up to 2023 and up to 2020 2025 or or up to 2030 so that's a very important exercise and that we do that's a design based exercise we will do mean the uh, why we select a different voltage level for transmission like if i'm selecting hvac 500 kv why that is basically depending upon the power evacuation and the loss and the corona and all other factors that we will discuss at at the extra high voltage level and similarly the inter interconnection of remote generation so this is also most important I mean i am i am connecting the southern generation towards the load center so that's very important parameter also so mean I mean where and where i need to connect that remote generation at which point either i should directly import towards the load center or i should evacuate on the simple on a, from the southern part towards our load center so this is basically depend upon the analysis and also development of alternate transmission and schemes in identification of facility requirement so it's basically based on the uh, system requirements either we are moving towards the like in pakistan the highest voltage now we have achieved in 765 hp hvac so 765 kv and also in in hvdc as a 660 kv so this is based on the development and also the timing of new generation facility and analysis of horizon and intermediate years so all these generation plan transmission plan basically in the whole course we will see we will move around the transmission network I mean i'm 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 proposing this line why i mean why why this conductor why this voltage and why this rating conductor either i'm i'm, I'm proposing for next 5 years maybe in next 5 years the demand increase this conductor need to be replaced so all these factors should be uh, mean in considered in the transmission planning okay after horizon is clear and after preliminary selection of transmission alternative based on the uh, power transfer based on the conceptual analysis now develop a model now so after the selection of technology development of an alternative you should create a pipeline okay i need a substation based on the demand in this in 2023 year, uh, 2023 spot year i need this grid up to 20 kv but in next year the demand will increase i have to augment that i mean i have to extend that substation to 500 uh, like 500 kv and like 765 kv so based on the demand based on the load demand analysis and we perform we is basically propose the network like at we if we are at 11 kv this is a simple load then at at 6 66 and 33 kv okay don't worry about the generation like i have mentioned wabda jenco's ipp this is basically related to pakistan network but you can uh, understand basically there are three different things like generation transmission networks and the bulk customer as well as the distribution demand so in this way we develop a model basically build a power system model based up to 2023 then up to 2020 2030 and then 2035 and then 2040 so in this uh, for each intermediate years we develop a plan mean we we develop a and in a tabular method that we need that gen generating station in this year then we need that uh, transmission station in this year and we need this transmission network and this technology in this year 
So this uh, in, in this way we build a power system model. So next is the transmission planning approach. So in the transmission planning approach, like in the substation wise, now we have developed all the conceptual analysis. Now we are moving towards the software. We are moving towards the software. We all the now we are modeling all these things, the substation peak demand, zonal peak demand, all these things we will add in the softwares. And similarly, the generation expansion plan, then units, locations, steady state parameter, dynamic parameters. So base we will add in the software. And similarly, the transformer transmission network that we have proposed and we have set in our uh, based on our conceptual analysis, we, we will add in the network and then we will perform the different studies and then we will see all these uh, analysis under those assumptions other under those criteria steady state as well as the transit. If they if, if our choice, if our proposal is following that if, if is validating the criteria basically mean within the criteria within the acceptable limits, then it means that our proposal is good. But after that, we need to perform a cost analysis. Then we need to tell that as well as technical as well as the cost. This is an effective proposal. So this in, in this way, this is how we perform the transmission planning exercise. So similarly, after that, we directly move towards the simulation. Like in simulation, we perform load flow study and we see that either with, with the addition of this transmission line, uh, mean the, uh, that the transmission losses are reduced or short circuit study are I uh, mean the losses are voltage profile are improved. So in this way and similarly we perform the short circuit studies to check the breaker ratings because with the addition of the generation capacity for future definitely the fall level will be increased and the transient stability we see the stability of the system and also the power quality studies. But at transmission level we don't see the power quality studies we see power quality study up in only in the distribution level like where the voltage are variation are large. OK, this is the uh, PSS interface quick overview. So I'm um, before I think we uh, before going to the uh, uh, softwares. So if you have any question related to the transmission planning process or any other, so you can ask I think and also we can take a break also if <laughs> because it's a one hour lecture. So I think we should uh, you can ask question now related to this if you have any confusion. Uh, Tahir, please explain uh, that power interface slide again, please. OK, sure. Basically, I, I I think I need to. Need to use a whiteboard for you, so I need to. OK, can you see the uh, whiteboard, right? No, I cannot see. OK, I think it will take some time. And then. Now you can see. OK, I'm moving towards the slide, I think. Yeah, 
Yes. Can you see the map? Yes. Yes, basically in that uh, basically in the power transfer interfaces, uh, what we do is that we perform a conceptual analysis like uh, for a Pakistan network. You have an idea of, uh, about the Pakistan network I mean from the southern part, almost the five and five thousand four hundred megawatt is coming from the southern part towards the load center, right? So there is thermal generation and there is a wind generation in our southern part like in 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 our this area this so what we do with this basically in this in this region in this region we make a line mean we make a, a one interface that one interface is this mean this much generation is coming out of this mean there some generation is coming uh, from the ac circuit and one uh, some generation from the dc circuit so we make a just a conceptual interface mean here is an interface and similarly the next interface should be at the also the distribution between the mid country like Saival and Kudu station are also here. So we make mean there is a generation addition here also in future. And similarly from the northern part there is a generation addition also. OK, so it means that the generation is added from northern part. So we sum up all generation at one point like all generation is coming towards the load center. So where should be the interface like a Rewat grid station or the Gujramala grid station? OK, are, are, are okay. the basic. So we add a, a line here. I mean we have, we sum up all generation up to this this point. That gives you a, a, a basically idea that this much generation is coming from the south and this much generation coming from the north. So we know that in future this much generation is uh, coming, so it means that there is a uh, transmission addition in the network. OK, then the next step is that we need to have a root survey of the network. I mean either we can add the transmission network here or not based on the right of way and basin. That is the next step to build the uh, concept of transmission. But before uh, basically before going to the transmission uh, decision, so we should have an idea of power transfer interfaces. So there are multiple interfaces in the network because we are the generation like in our uh, mid part from the MAPCO area. There is a lot of generation like CAPCO and GENCOs are there and the Saival coal. So we add a, a mid also and also a lot of renewable in Kuwait from Balochistan and from the Sindh part. We may add uh, interfaces. So in order to evacuate that power that interfaces towards the load center, we need a transmission capacity. We need a transformation capacity. OK, so basically okay. we do this. So, OK, anyone else? So we can say that uh, so we can say that Guddu power line from Guddu to Muzaffargar is is a power system. Power transfer interface. Yes, exactly. I mean there are different interfaces, but one interface <coughs> is that mostly because I said power transfer interface, so it's, it is related to generation capacity. Basically, I mean we sum up the generation okay. and see the point of interconnection point of feeding I mean where it is a feeding towards the load center. So that is our interface. Then we move forward because that is a, a, a input to the transmission. I mean I have mentioned in the process also the load forecast. One input is a demand and next input is a generation. So transmission network is only provide a wheeling services from generation to the demand. So therefore yes, we yes, need sir. to develop the interfaces, a conceptual analysis, then we go move, move far, further. Okay, okay anyone Thank else? You. OK, Joseph, if, if, if you have any question, right? You can ask in the chat box, right? OK, I, sh I, I think we should move towards the simulation and all people are waiting for the recording, right? <laughs> 
So. Okay, Asan, can you see this uh, software's interface? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So this is a basically PSSE software interface. Uh, after the lecture, I will provide the software in the MST team link and you can download that software and install in your PC. So today's our basically a little bit introductory session on the user and basically PSSE quick overview. So the first thing is that PSSE user interface. So, so that you, PSS interface is user friendly, like starting from the file. Add file section, you can open any file and you can save and you can import and export files from different software also. And the next is the edit and, and under the edit tab, there is a preferences. You can set your own preferences like for different analysis, journal analysis and the diagram and different scenarios. We can define our own preferences also. And similarly, we can see different view windows. Here is the if we uncheck though these windows, we can see that. Here, but if we add these window, we can see here on the model of OPF tree view, dynamic tree view and model tree. View. And the next step related to power flow because these options are not visible because we have not created any case. Once we will create a case, then we can perform these analysis and the, also the miscellaneous analysis also. So in the menu bar, the, all these settings, but before going to start this, P, uh, the build a network in the PSSE, a little bit introduction to the toolbar. Here, quick access toolbar is not available. Simply clicking on the on any bar here, right click on, you can check all these options to access all these things on the quick access toolbar. Different all these options. So now all these options available in the quick access toolbar, we can directly access through here. So in order to create a workspace, click, click on the file and click on new. And we are creating a network case as, as well as diagram. So avoid. Yes, the most important thing is the base MV. The in PSSC, the base MV is 100. So make sure that all component values like the reactants of transformer and the transmission line should be on the 100 MV base. So, uh, so we mainly we calculate all these parameters and then we add it, add those parameters in the software. Uh, is the there any provision in the, in the software? Uh, is there any provision in the software from which we can calculate uh, the base MVA? Uh, sorry, the MVAs of other uh, equipment uh, related to yes. uh, base MVA. Yeah, basically, that TMLC calculator is available for related transmission line calculator. So we calculate the different component like the transformer and the transmission line base MVA for these components also. But the, all other components okay. like for the generator, we directly convert into our 100 MVA base by simply dividing the percent like the X and their MV. Okay. But the transmission and transformer, there is a uh, transmission line TMLC is available. We will see if we have a license. We will do that exercise also. Otherwise, we will do yes. this exercise on the Excel sheet. TMLC is a separate software. Basically, that's the add on module in this PSS. Okay. So that required extra code, right? OK, next, <laughs> next. <laughs> OK, by clicking on OK and then the case will be appear. So by simply clicking on control tab, you can move switch back between these two window control tab. You are in network case and you will control press a control tab. You will in, in the diagram. So it means we are uh, introducing two files. The first one is the single line diagram file and the next one is the network case file. So before going to start our work from the scratch, first save your file. OK, saving file is save as because we are saving the single line diagram file. 
so we said sld but now but we cannot save the case because there there is no element available in the case before going before going to save this case at least place one component here so there are two ways to place a component in the case either directly adding a, a value here in the network case or placing a component from the network simply now you can see that all options are available power flow is available fault option opf dynamics disturbances and all options are, are visible initially there were th these options were not visible because the case and the sld were as not open now in order to place a bus here is a components tab you can access these component here simply placing a bus here and place a bus number and then okay bus name is bus a and we should define this bus is a generator bus. We, we need to define a code of that bus and the bus KV, I think 13.8 KV because it's a generator bus at LV. And all these parameters that voltage and angle we can set here, but th that will uh, be after the solution so solution of power flow analysis. These uh, parameter will be automatically adjusted adjusted. And also we can define area like in uh, in Pakistan there are 10 distribution companies so there are 10 areas like PESCO, MAPCO, FESCO so there are 10 areas each bus have different bus uh, area number so we can define area here in the case so depending upon the area we we, we can access those only out of the, the whole case. Okay click OK then after that place another bus like bus number two and bus B and this bus is a simple non generator bus. And the voltage level is. OK, I, I said it should be 33 KV or 132 KV. And next bus is a also bus number three and the, this is also. A, I think non generator bus and this is bus C. And the voltage level, for example, it's it's voltage level is 132 KV. OK, so press escape so that the component will be unselected. Now you can add another component. So there are I have placed three buses. Now you can save your case because the component available in your case memory. So sample case. OK. So now because we have made this as a generator bus, so we need to add a generator here on this bus. So li like this is 10 megawatt generator and the P max and P minimum, the Q max and Q minimum and the M base that is give based on the reactive capability curve of a generator. I mean there is no hard and fast rule to calculate these things. So basically this is given on the reactive capability curve. Basically that is called generator capability curve that basically tells us that if you are producing this much megawatt in order to make MV constant this much reactive power you can produce. So and also the next thing is the X course. So for example, I'm making this is 10 maximum T there and P minimum is zero like it should be zero, not zero. OK, three megawatt and Q max is four megawatt and this minus four. However, we can calculate on the basis of the power factor also. And the PGN over power factor is M base. I'm putting 25 mac MV and the X source of the transformer is like 0 0.01. So initially this is not as conventional generator. This is not a solar or wind. So we will see how to model a sol different renewable generator. So as escape, then here you can see that the generator is available. And next because the voltage is 13.8 KV and next voltage is 132 KV. Why different colors are here? I will show you that there are different annotations. I have def already defined in the here the system default level. You can see for 11 KV this this color for 60 less than 66 KV this color. So there are different voltage threshold level. There are for different system level diagrams are defined. 
And next we can we need to add a transformer to winding transformer from bus A to bus B. OK, the two basically the two parameters, the rate MVA. What is the because there's a 10 MVA transformer? OK, I am adding the 13 MVA transformer for 13 MVA. The MVA should be at 10 percent. Should be one. Because on an F it is a 13 MVA. OK, next is the same voltage level. It means that there should be a transmission line here. So I'm adding a branch. So in branch we need to add R in per unit, X in per unit, then the charging value in per unit, then the rate A and then the rate B that the thermal rating and the length of this. So I'll, I'm assuming this zero value and the rate is OK. I'm assuming links conductor. It is one one two and the value. OK, I can add later and the length is like five kilometers. And the next thing is that load. Basically, there's a single bus network. I'm adding seven megawatt load and the three me megawatt reactive power. I can, however, we can set this on based on the power factor. Now, in order to solve our case, before going to solve the case, save your SLD and then save your case respectively. Sample case. Now in, go to power flow solution and solve. First check your flash start, but initially there uh, here you cannot see the importance of flash start bus, but when, once you uh, are working on the larger network, then you will see the importance of flash start. But what 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 is the importance of flash start is that what is the meaning of flash start? I mean we are we are performing the power flow solution in such a way that all the bus voltages and the all the bus buses voltages are at flat start like at one angle zero and then they will gradually move towards the actual condition so this makes I mean uh, this make help us to converge case within the less lesser iteration okay he said that there is no swing bus so there is island that's a good because in 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 any system for a, th a theoretical simulation, there must be a one swing bus. OK, so in order to make a swing bus, click on make a generator bus is also a swing bus. Now go to power flow solution and solve. Click on the solve. Here you can see that in the report bar, the MET convergence tolerance and the swing bus is generating 7 megawatt and 3.6 megawatt to D1. So because it's a one, only single generator demand is 7 megawatt and only 7 megawatt is is fed by this generator single generator. if there is a lot of generators a lot of demand and there are different areas definitely that areas are fed by different generator depending upon the power flows and the connect interconnections and interface flows so this is the uh, basic inter introduction of the pssc like i have solved this is a power flow solution and i have solved this and now you can see that. Now you can also see the different loadings on the transformer as well as the line because I have not I have added only 7% of rate A. And next is the also you can see the animation flow animated flows also. And you can see that the reactive power from the sum uh, due to the transformer is also coming back towards the generator also. OK, so in, in this basically in this interface only what we have do that we have created a single line diagram file as well as we have created a, a save case file. So the there are two basic file in PSSE, the save case file and the SLD file. So however, there are different files I can show you in the here. We can see that there are a lot of files. There are a lot of different files, but the basic file the to in order to start in order to learn the software from the first two files, the save case file and the slider binary file. So we will do a couple of exercise on these two files and then we will move for the sequence file and the transient snapshot file and the dynamic data files as well as other OPF files. And next is that in order uh, now we can see that there are different 
options available in diagram. You can see properties in property. You can set different font of your uh, flows and text. You, we can set here in property and under property tab. And also we can define our own annotation if we are interested in the bus voltage annotation like magnitude, not in KV. So click on OK. Now only you can see the magnitude is available 13.8 KV and this, not in per unit. Similarly, in system default level, if we are showing the bus annotation and the bus number, here the bus name is given. Now we are checking the bus number also. Equipment annotation you can define here and the Procyon results or for results like up to two decimal, three decimal. Now you can see that different. As per your developed, I mean set preferences, different uh, analysis you can see. And similarly in power flow, there is a solution tab. We can solve the different analysis and we can perform the diff and we can generate different reports also like limit checking report. I'm, I'm interested in the out of bus voltage limit and I'm seeing all buses. I'm said OK. So output is that there is no bus that is less than 1.05. So in, in such a way we can uh, perform the voltage check. That we have seen in the presentation that step in the steady state performance criteria. In is similarly we will see a lot of uh, uh, all the analysis option mean how we validate and how we perform the different analysis to uh, check the criteria as per the studies requirement. OK, next is the fault analysis. Yes, the fault calculations is here. We will see in the short circuit part and OPF part is also an add on module that required a separate license for this. We will not cover in this course and the dynamic. Yes, we will cover this in the simulation. We will perform for because all these options are not available because the dynamic data is not available. So when we will see the transient stability, then we will explore this tab also. And similarly, subsystem here we can define our subsystem. The we have defined only one area. We said apply. So now we can go back here. We can see there. Now coming back towards the network diagram, network case here you can see this is a bus and the plant tab. Only one plant and only one machine. Because sometime in in some plant there is different machines like in a combined cycle plants, the steam and turbine and the gas turbine. So th there may be a different machines also. And load data is here, fiction, switch and induction machine, branch data. When the data you have I mean you have added in the single line diagram, but the data saved in your save case format in in in, in the save file. And similarly, we can add here also directly in the save case. And we will see in the next lecture I mean how to directly add the information in the case and then we can save the case. And similar to winding, three winding, impedance table, fact devices data is here because we have not added any fact devices. So all component that we will add in the single line diagram are in directly in the case. All these information will be saved in this format. So I think this is the end of our today's lecture. This is a basic interface and that a quick overview of our transmission planning and the softwares. So if anyone have a question, they can ask. And moreover, this uh, regarding recording will be available in the MS team class. You can download it, but you cannot share. OK, please, if anyone have a question, then they can ask. OK, I have one question about uh, the modeling. Okay, you said so we can we can uh, have a common base MVA or we can calculate it on Excel sheet. Yes, yes. So, so how we can do that? Basically, basically, uh, basing uh, we will see in the next lecture the per unit uh, method, right? We will see in the next lecture per unit method mean how to uh, calculate the per unit impedances and per unit from base value to different value. Like in the transformer reactants, because the every transformer has own base. OK, so what we do, because we calculate the new value of our trans transformer reactants based on the formula like X new is equal to X old is into uh, the S new over S, the basically the MVA new over MVA old and the voltage. 
the uh, at one side of the transformer is same we can make this ratio is unity so that is a voltage square in this way we, we will see this a uh, calculation in the excel sheet okay so this is a formula oh, okay because when, when we calculate the new value on new base so this is a formula basically we the thing is that we, we are interested in the reactance because once the base is changing so it means that reactance value is changed so we need to calculate that reactance value x value at new base simply you should have a, a, a old base also we have a x uh, old x reactance also we need to calculate the basically new x value so that is a formula we will discuss in the per unit method that will it will be in the next lecture i think so but uh, in detail we will see i mean i i will answer your question uh, Tahir, I have one question. Uh, yes. Can you please uh, open the generator parameter? Yes, yes. Oh. Can you see? Yep. Okay. What is the P P gen here? Uh, yes. The basically this is the uh, basically the gross value. I mean the if if the hundred megawatt plant is uh, installed at the field. So it means that, that that P gen is the generating value of your 100 megawatt. Sometime in order to set a reserve, we can run that generator at 80 megawatt. It means that we have set 20 megawatt reserve at that generator. OK. Mm -hmm. so, so P gen is a basically maximum megawatt, the net megawatt that is coming at, at the this bus. You can see at this bus 6.991 megawatt is coming. So I mean this is the value. OK. They mean the the megawatt entering at the POI that po at point of interconnection. Okay, and sometimes some some plant the larger plant like coal plant have a own colonies and different facilities and the department available inside the plant. So that have auxiliary auxiliary load also. So what they do they placed the auxiliary auxiliary load here like two megawatt here. Okay, no I have added that auxiliary load here. So now I'm solving the case again. So now you can see that 8 megawatt here, 2 megawatt 6 is coming again here. Because the swing now is it's generating 8 because this is a swing generator. Otherwise, if, if it another generator, the only swing can change, adjust its generation, but all other generation are fixed. OK. So basically, this is a, a megawatt that is given on the nameplate data of a generator. We add add in this system and add in this and next parameter is P max. This P max is based on the capability curve of the generator. Mean way how mean how much my generator can goes up and how much my generator can goes down. So this is available. This is basically manufactured data. Mm -hmm. Those who design the generator, they provide with you, you with a generator capability curve of that generator. Mean operator can only run that generator within this range. If the, if we move out of this range, then there will be a excitation loss of synchronism as well as the uh, heating effect that will negative impact on the generator life. OK, OK. Imagine that you uh, this is not a swing generator. So if your P max is 100 megawatt, 10 megawatt and Sorry, P, yes. P minimum is 3 megawatt. OK, so if you define this parameter P gen to 5 megawatt, so what will happen? Yes, basically now uh, like I have defined the 5 megawatt if, if uh, now because I have added the only one generator that is uh, only swing. So mm, it means yeah. that the demand is 7 megawatt. See demand is 7 megawatt and I'm adding the 5 megawatt generator. What you expect because this is a swing. Definitely swing will take care of the demand. Swing yeah. will go to 7. Let's see. Uh, uh, first, I'm switching that generator so that the case will be real become. Now I'm adding 5 megawatt. OK. Now I'm solving the case. Now you can see again swing go back to 7 megawatt because demand is 7. OK, now what I do, I add a generator here. Like it is 2 megawatt. Forget about the P max P minimum. Because why it is uh, uh, disconnected because this bus is non generator. Make it generator bus. Now it will be fine. OK. OK, no, no, see demand is 7 megawatt, 2 megawatt is here and 5 megawatt is here. OK, I'm saying 5 megawatt is here. 
So what? Definitely, the two megawatt is fed by this generator, and the remaining will be from this generator. Now I'm solving again. Now you can see the seven megawatt demand, two megawatt is fed by here, and the five megawatt from here. Okay. Yep. The swing is adjusting. Basically, swing. Uh, when we solve the larger network, swing is a very important. The swing balancing assist as a system operator. Mean we 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 have a complete idea of our swing. Basically, swing tells the frequency variation. Mean that demand is balanced or not. So it means that now here you can see I am increasing the demand here. Like I have increased the demand to 15 megawatt. And reactive power. Okay, I'm not changing reactive power. Okay, change reactive power to five megawatt. Now what what you expect? The demand is 15 megawatt. Now two megawatt from the from this generator. Okay, because it has two megawatt. Now remaining 13 megawatt will be supplied by the swing C. Can you see? Yep. Yeah. No. So it this is not correct that we need to supply this megawatt in the swing. Basically, in practical, in in a real in a real network, there is no concept of swing bus. This is a, a swing concept of swing bus is only in the theoretical in a calculation. Basically, swing bus. Tells you that, give you a hint that how much my system is balanced. Now you can see here is the asterisk is here in the report bar. Here on the pigeon, can you see that there is a asterisk? This basically this gave you a hint that swing bus is telling that. Demand is increasing. You need to add a generator. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so swing bus is basically giving you a hint that demand is increasing. You need to add another generator. So what I am doing? I am increasing this this value. I mean, I said okay. I have increases to 10 megawatt. I have added another generator of 5 10 megawatt. So definitely the demand is 15 megawatt. 10 megawatt is fed by this generator and remaining five by swing. Now again solve it. Now you see. So basically, swing tells you that how to operate the system. So similarly, as is, a, uh, you define the swing generator max capacity 10 megawatt, right? So yes. But went went up to uh, 13 megawatt. So that means you are overloading the swing generator. Yes, basically, basically, because there is nothing, no, no, no other generation. Now you can see that uh, I have added ten here. Like this, demand is fifteen. I'm, I'm making uh, one megawatt. So definitely, so because the demand is fifteen, now fourteen megawatt is required, and I have added ten megawatt P max. Mm -hmm. So uh, practically, it does not goes beyond this value. But this is a swing. the name defines that it is a flexible it will may it will basically it will supply 13 but it will gives you a, a error here a asterisk said that p max is 10 megawatt you need to add a 4 megawatt generator another okay yeah yes so basically this is uh, this is how you control the system uh, i will show you the in the next lecture the uh, next to uh, to next lecture the complete network of pakistan or any other network you will see it's a very uh, uh, swing balancing is itself a, a one task in the base case formation i mean we need to basically based on the dispatch we balance the swing then we proceed further to the next analysis okay okay Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I want to ask about uh, the R uh, near to the the, the machine. The yes. R. It indicates to reactive power. Yes. Yes. Basically, this this is the range of reactive power. You here you can see that the I have added the four uh, max and q max. So it means that the generator is supplying within the range. Basically, this is the curve. You see the. Uh, Uh, basically this is the uh, related to uh, reactive capability curve because we we as a as a system operator you should know about the reactive capability because once you will go in a negative region that there will be a heating effect and if you go a positive high region then there will be a I mean absorption in loss of synchronism 
okay mean the generator must cannot absorb like this i am adding uh, i am increasing the reactive power of load for a system of, i am adding uh, like 10 megawatt now you will see that 10 megawatt reactor power is supplied by the swing c okay sorry that that is uh, 0 0.9 10 megawatt here okay i'm because i'm 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 switch it off not we can supply uh, added uh, 2 megawatt here Worry about the changing parameter. I, only I'm 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 uh, changing parameter to uh, describe you the uh, answer your question. Otherwise, we cannot change parameter like this. Every generator have its own specification and own generator capability count. We will set those parameters. Now you see that I have a demand of 10 megawatt. Now I have a solve. Now you see there is H value here. H. Okay. So H mean it's high. It means that the generator is supplying more reactive power. Out of limit. So it means uh, we can say out that that is this uh, in, in, in technical term. It is over excitation. OK, OK, so mean, yes. mean, mean you are providing extra field current and this generator is over excited. Definitely it will be below within next five years. Uh, mean if you run at yes. th that point, but in the same fashion, uh, uh, I have added a uh, like I have added a capacitor here at load near the load. I have added a capacitor of uh, like B shunt B shunt of 20 megawatt. Now you will see the demand is 10 megawatt, and I have added 20 megawatt capacitor. You will see a reactive power towards the generator back towards the see it's low. Can you see? Yes, yes. Now it means that generator is absorbing reactive power. So it means that this is under excitation limit. So now if you run that generator under excitation limit for next two to three hours, thus maybe the system generator will lose synchronism. That is a loss of synchronism. That is loss of generator. Generator will trip. Okay. So this is the under excitation limit and over excitation limit. So this is how uh, basically PSS uh, gave you a hint that if it is an R, so this this is called reactive balancing. Next, the first one is the swing balancing, and next is the reactive balancing. So Muktadir asked about the swing balances, and you asked about the reactive balancing, and we will do these exercise in next case when whenever we will uh, make a case. The first concept is that uh, uh, balance your swing, and next concept is that reactive balance your generator. And the third concept is that create, I uh, mean, check your voltage, voltage check. Though there is no limit violation, no voltage violation. Then check the under voltage and the branches and over voltage. Then go, uh, neck, move towards the power flow analysis and the short circuit analysis. So this is how you control the parameter. Because PSSE is not operational software. Basically, PSSE model the operational scenario. I mean, first you see that there is a blackout. OK, now uh, collect all the blackout condition and then put in the PSSE C. Is this happen? Yes, it's OK. Now uh, you can propose a solution. So this is not a real time software. So you take a snap of scenarios and then model those scenario in PSSE. And then therefore the PSSE is very important for the transmission planning because it is long term exercise for next 10 to 20 years. You propose a network. So therefore it is a good software for the transmission plan. Mm -hmm. uh, one question. Uh, sorry, my one more question. Um, yes. Do you have a thermal map in in PSC? Sorry, which map? Thermal uh, map. Yeah. Yes, I, I can. Uh, we can open it on the uh, uh, Google uh, also. Let's let me share with you. Okay. No, I I have one more thing I can share with you also. I think so. Yes. No, not here. Okay, I I, I need to hear it.
Yes, can you see this uh, curve? Anyone, any curve, this curve, yes. Yes, no, tell me. Oh, no, sorry, uh, I think you understood wrong. Uh, I, was, I was talking about the, can you, uh, can you see the thermal map in PSC? Like uh, which part of the line and which part of the transformer or uh, is overloading? Yes, yes. Okay, you are you are uh, talking about the basically limit checking. Okay, I can yep. show you. Sorry. Here, here you can see. Now, now uh, and go to the this power flow solution and report. Okay, and then go to limit checking report. Here is a, a branches is option branches. Okay, and then here you can set the rate A. OK, and loading is 100% because under not normal condition, like as per we have studied in the uh, mean the presentation. Yeah. Click on OK. The report is that one circuit is overloaded. That's a one, 132 because can you see here the rate is 112. OK, mm -hmm. in the percentage loading, we can see the percentage loading. So sorry, sorry, this this transformer. OK, from bus two, one to bus two, bus one. To bus two, there is a transformer from 13 because the the value is 13 MVA, okay, MVA, and the value uh, the passing value MVA is I can calculate in front of you that the passing MVA is 14 square, okay, that is P, then plus 14 square, that is Q, this one, okay, mm -hmm. and under root this is S. Now you can see this is 19. And the value set in the transformer is 13. So 19 divided by 13. You can see 152%, 155. Here you see 155. Can you see? Yep. So it means that, that this is 55% is overloaded, not at 50, 155. At 100%, it means it is maximum loading. 155 means it is loaded 55%. So what I will do? I, I either I will uh, augment the transformer to 26 megawatt MVA or I will add a parallel transformer. Now you can see that 78. OK. This is how you check the thermal violation. So the, uh, when we say, uh, uh, model the uh, a bigger network like this is a single case network, you will not uh, uh, you. Uh, this is a just uh, uh, mean introductory in the session. But in the next lecture, we mean we will add different generator, different type of like thermal, solar, wind. Then the every generator have its own capability to give reactive power, right? And every line has own capability to pass that me megawatt and uh, reactive power. So definitely there will be a violations. Then we, we will see how to uh, mean resolve these violation, how we will propose the solution so as a remedial action scheme. So this is how you see. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. OK, anyone else? You can ask question. I, I love to answer the answer your question, right? If no one have question, then we can end our session for today's because today's is a, a basic. Uh, otherwise, we uh, from the next uh, be ready and I will share all material, the presentations and the research paper that we will uh, that you uh, that is very helpful in this uh, from the transmission planning perspective. And then moreover, I in the next session, I will uh, discuss as per that outline listed in the training as well as some international standards like AEMO standards and the NERC standards, any NER rules, reliability criteria, R1, R2 testing, generation compliance study, because basically we will see this course in the uh, parallel in three three ways. The first is the theoretical aspects and next is the PSSC software hands on ex mean aspect and the third one, the international market aspect, mean that in USA, what type of standards they are following in Australian market, AMO and MISO and ARCOT and the different, I mean the 
institutes are following different criteria and different grid code. We will see the planning, especially the planning code as well as the operational code. We will not see the connection code. Yes, we will see a little bit connection code in, in generation compliance test. Otherwise, we will directly move towards the, uh, the in order to complete that course. OK. So I think this is the end of our today's lecture. If anyone have a question, they can directly ask in our uh, uh, telegram group also and moreover also they can ask in the MS team group and this recording will be available in the MS team, but the recording to, to share recording is strictly provided. I mean you cannot share this recording. Simple. This is a class rule. This is uh, if anyone share, will share that professionally on that thing. Uh, OK. Hey, thank you. Welcome.